RuneScape's most iconic quests were almost very different, and Jagex never thought we would find out. Today, we're gonna take a look at cancelled quest lines, the deleted legendary sword, and so much more, all thanks to the RuneScape Archive Project. <laughs> Let's start off with RuneScape's most iconic quest, at least in my opinion, Dragon Slayer. Even if the boss is laughably easy in today's times, it's still a great quest, full of cutscenes, unique animations, and of course, an iconic reward. Plus, it's the only quest that made 10 year old me shake like a chihuahua. Now, most of what makes this quest great actually wasn't added until 2007. To name a few examples, there was no cutscene when traveling to Crandor, Crandor looked more like a sandals resort than a burned down city, and there was no animation where you chop off Elvarg's head and return it to Oziak to complete the quest. When you beat Elvarg, you were just teleported outside her lair and that was it. Quest over. You couldn't even read the rewards before getting hit by the skeletons that guard the gate. So, like I mentioned, Jagex did a big rework of the quest in 2007. Although the changes they made were great and made the quest much better, it was almost even cooler. These ghost 3D models appeared in the game's files, also known as the cache, when the quest was reworked. Although we don't know what they would have done, it's possible they would have appeared on Crandor as its deceased inhabitants. Speaking of which, even with the redesign, Crandor still doesn't look like much of a city. In the lore, Crandor was a big trading city that was considered as important as Falador or Varrock until Elvard burned it all down. Although there's definitely signs that there used to be buildings here, it's nothing that screams massive city. However, in the cache, it's been discovered that there were more building pieces that Jagex never used. I might be getting hyped up over nothing, but I think it would have been really cool to actually explore the ruins of Crandor, rather than just quickly running past them to get to Elvarg. Well, exploring Crandor might have actually been Jagex's original plan. These super dramatic looking death animations were also found along with the ghosts and building pieces. Perhaps those ghosts from earlier would show you around the island and reenact their deaths in a dreamlike cutscene. This animation was probably intended for a skeleton, which is why this guy's arm randomly falls off when he dies. But that's not the important part. Right at the end of this animation, the character lands in a position that is very similar to the skeleton found in Elvarg's cave. I think it's pretty likely that in the original version for this rework, we were actually going to get to know who this guy was. Was. I don't know why all of these pretty cool features were scrapped, but my guess is Jagex didn't want to stray too much from the original quest story. But I'm just gonna put this out there right now, a sequel quest, well, I guess not a sequel quest, a prequel quest where you get to explore Crandor before it burned down would be pretty cool. But not as cool as getting fresh, gourmet, chef-cooked meals straight to your doorstep from today's sponsor, Factor. If you're like me, you want to eat healthy. You make a plan, find some recipes, and then lunchtime comes around and you decide one more cheeseburger won't hurt. With Factor, I have no excuses. All I gotta do is pop one in the microwave and two minutes later, it's ready to eat. Not only is it healthier, it's never frozen and you can really taste the difference. With 27 plus meal options each week, you'll have plenty to choose from. Whether you're keto, vegan, calorie smart, or whatever, there's a plan that that fits your lifestyle and goals. One of my goals is to spend more time getting purples after work and less time at the grocery store. So to get 50% off your first box, use my link below or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGCOLMAR50. Speaking of old areas, let's talk about the Piscatoris fishing colony. It released back in May of 2006 along with the Swan Song quest. However, the area you would need to to go through to get to the colony wasn't finished. This was because the area would later play a big part in the hunter skill. Today, in this area alone, there's 12 different types of animals you can catch. Plus, there's even the Eagle's Peak quest in this mountain to the south, which rewards you with 2,500 hunter XP. You could do a region-locked Iron Man here and reasonably get to 99 hunter without hating yourself. Now, hunter didn't actually release until November of 2006, 
2006, a few months after the Swan Song quest. So if this area wasn't ready yet, how were players supposed to get to the fishing colony? Looking at this map from back then, it may seem pretty straightforward. Just walk north. Except this gate goes all the way around and blocks you from doing so. So you couldn't walk there, and the fairy ring there didn't exist yet, so Jagex had to add this boat to the south, which would take you to the colony's gates. Even when Hunter did release a few months later and a fairy ring was added, the boat stayed. I always thought that Jagex just added the boat as a convenience for players who didn't want to walk that far, but I guess it's because developers hadn't finished mapping the area yet. Something similar actually happened back in 2005, except this time it was an accident. Between a Rock is the quest that unlocks the dwarven city of Keldegrim, but it seems someone accidentally uploaded the city to the live game two months before it was finished. There was no way to actually access it, but thanks to these old caches, we can take a look at what it originally looked like. For the most part, it's pretty similar to the final design, just empty. A little bit creepily so. Like, this would make for a good Liminal Spaces photo shoot. Keldegrim today is one of RuneScape's most alive cities. Not in terms of players who visit, except for the Blast Furnace. Otherwise, it's more dead than neat. There's characters who traverse all over the city on set paths, others who are always shouting something, and this guy, he's awesome. In this version of Keldegrim, it's almost like everyone in the city packed up and moved out. But then again, that would probably just be Moria from from the Lord of the Rings. The wealth of Moria was not in gold or jewels, but Ithril. It's pretty rare that unfinished content like that actually makes it into the live game. Most unfinished content gets added to the cache, never gets used, and later gets deleted before players ever even see it. Because Jagex is working on new projects all the time, we have a lot of weird unfinished content to look at. Like this guy. It's a giant wearing some sort of rune-like armor. Nobody knows why this model didn't ever end up releasing into the live game, but it's probably because he looks like he belongs belongs in Tron. As for quest-related content, we have this fella. He was added to the cache when Jagex was working on the In Aid of the Mire Key quest, a quest that features a lot of vampires. Based on his teeth, hands, and eyes, he's definitely a vampire too, but you might have also noticed this flesh cape looking thing. Well, it's actually not a cape, it's his wings. I don't know why, but these smooth fleshy wings make me pretty uncomfortable. On the topic of vampires, you may remember a video I did about RuneScape's internship program. In it, I discussed that Desert Treasure, which was made by an intern, was originally going to be four separate quests. One of those quests was going to be named Vampire Warrior. Other than basic info, we don't really know much about the original version of these quests, but Vampire Warrior made it into Desert Treasure in some form, as you do fight a vampire during the quest. So in Desert Treasure today, you put garlic powder, spice, and grossly, your own blood into a blessed silver pot. After preparing this pot of cursed soup, you go to a graveyard in Mauritania and pour the pot over the coffin, which wakes the vampire up? It's pretty weird and gross, but it was almost even grosser, if that's a word. In the quest, you can just grab a piece of garlic from anywhere to make the garlic powder. But these models from the cache back then show that originally you were going to have to grow the garlic yourself. And farming wasn't even a skill yet. Yeah, farming kind of sucks, but that's not the gross part. That same pot of blood was also found in the cache, except with a sword inside it. Nobody knows what the sword would have been for, but its model was later reused with the Slayer Master Majna. If I had to guess, the sword, which looks like it could be made of silver, may have become the weapon to use against vampires, rather than the Avandis and Blisterwood flails, which would have been awesome. Like, look at how cool this thing is. I'm getting off track though. This is where things get really weird. In the quest, a vampire noble cuts you and fills the pot with your blood. Originally, you would have drained the blood yourself into the pot at the altar. The only reason we know this is because of this sound effect that was found in the cache that honestly just makes my skin crawl. 
I think this part got scrapped because slitting your wrist over the coffin of an undead monster wouldn't sit well with mom. Now, interestingly enough, the pot actually still exists in the game cache today, and although it's not used anywhere in-game, you can actually see it yourself with Idol's Prop Hunt plugin. Now, another one of the quests that would later become part of Desert Treasure was known as Legendary Sword. In that one, you'd meet a talking sword, you'd complete a mission for it, and the sword would give itself to you. This is possibly what that sword was originally going to look like. I don't know what the spiky bits are, but maybe the sword is frozen and you'd have to free him or something? Anyway, that internship program was way crazier than you might expect. The intern who originally made Desert Treasure actually got fired halfway through, which is why the quest is so weird today. You can check out the video about that on the right hand side of the screen.